Welcome students. In this video, we are going to study combinatorics. Combinatorics is a branch of mathematics that is concerned with counting a uh, number of outcomes of certain operations. Um, in this video, we are going to study the following four simple rules, which will help us to solve any combinatorial problem. These rules are multiplication rule, uh, permutations in the case when all objects are distinct, then permutations in the case when not all objects are distinct, and finally, counting uh, combinations. We are going to start with counting ordered sequences multiplication rule. Uh, let's assume that you are concerned with uh, counting the number of outcomes when you are throwing a single die, die two times. So you are throwing a die a single time, you are recording the outcome, and then you are throwing it second time and recording an outcome. The number of outcomes in this operation might be represented as ordered sequence. So if you got number one on the first row and number three on the second row, we can represent it as the following ordered sequence. Now to calculate the total number of outcomes possible in that operation, we can use the following simple rule. Um, if operation A can be performed in M different ways and operation B in N different ways, then uh, the sequence, ordered sequence, operation outcome of operation A uh, and outcome of operation B can be performed in N multiplied by M different ways. So total number of outcomes in our experiment here uh, is equal to six multiplied by six. Now let's prove that. Uh, proof is straightforward. So if we can, um, if we have an operation A, uh, with M different ways, it can be performed. So Let's denote the M ways our operation A can be performed. So here is outcome one, outcome two, and so on. Up to an outcome M. For each outcome of operation A, uh, we have N possible outcomes of operation B. So it can be branched in the following way. Uh, here's operation A. Here we have operation B, operation B. So for each outcome of operation A, we have N possible outcomes of operation B. So one, two, and so on, and outcome number N, and so on. For outcome number two of operation A, we again have n possible outcomes of operation B. So now if we count uh, the total number of possible ordered sequences, operation outcome of operation A, uh, comma outcome of operation B, then the total number is going to be equal to N multiplied by M. All right, now uh, if we follow the similar proof, uh, we can derive the following, following uh, corollary. If operation I, if we have K operations here, and if operation AI can be performed in NI different ways, uh, then the ordered sequence, outcome of operation A1, a comma, or outcome of operation A2, and so on, up to outcome of operation AK, it can be performed in N1 multiplied by N2, multiplied by up to NK, number of different ways. All right, now, um, uh, this is the simplest uh, rule uh, out of our four here. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, 
So Braille alphabet is built in the following manner. Uh, we have a six dot matrix uh, in the following way. So two by three six dot matrix and uh, certain symbols are uh, built in the following manner. We are either raising a dot or uh, leaving it unraised. So for instance, the letter E can be um, expressed as uh, follows. So we are raising a dot here and we are raising a dot over here and leaving all other dots unraised. And any character can be represented in the following manner. Uh, so question is following in how many different ways characters can be enciphered in Braille. So let's uh, calculate the total number of possible uh, different characters that can be enciphered using the following six dot matrix. Um, now we can consider each dot here as a certain operation. So we have operation A here, which will, let's say, correspond to the uh, top left corner dot here. Operation B here, so this is operation A, operation B here, and so on. So we have six dots, six corresponding operations. Uh, now let's calculate the total number of possible outcomes for each operation. Uh, we have two choices for each dot. E either we can raise a dot or we can leave it unraised. We have two outcomes for operation A. We have two outcomes for operation B, two outcomes for operation C and so on. Then using our uh, multiplication rule for counting the number of ordered sequences, we get two to the power of six number of symbols. Now, the second rule that we are going to study is permutations in the case when all objects are distinct. We have seen ordered sequences arising in the case when we were working with multiplication rule. Now, ordered sequences also arise in the case when we are building an ordered sequence of length k out of a set of n distinct objects. Uh, let's take a look at the following simple example. Uh, let's assume that we would like to uh, create words of length 2 uh, from the following three letters A, B, and C. So the number of words that we can generate is equal to, let's count them. We have A, B, B, A, A, C, C, A, B, C, C, B. So these are ordered sequences, meaning um, order is important and B, C is not the same as C, B. So the total number of words, two letter words that we can create out of three letters, out of three distinct letters is equal to six. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at our formula for counting permutations. The number of permutations of length K that can be formed from set of N different objects where repetitions are not allowed is denoted by the following symbol, permutations of length K out of N objects and is calculated as N factorial divided by N minus K factorial. Uh, so the proof is pretty straightforward. Um, Let's say we have and we are trying to build an ordered sequence of lengths k. So we have n vacant places here. Um, now uh, the total number of outcomes uh, we have for a first place in our sequence is equal to n since we are choosing from n distinct objects. The number of outcomes that we can choose from uh, for the second place in our ordered sequence is equal to n minus one, since we've already have used one element in the first place. Number of outcomes that we can choose from 
for a third place in our sequence is equal to n minus two then. Since we have used one outcome in the second place and one outcome in the first place and so on up to n minus k plus one or number of outcomes in the last place in our sequence. Uh, which gives us a uh, following product uh, from n to n minus k plus one, which can be represented as n factorial over n minus k factorial. Now, uh, the total number of outcomes um, in our simple example here, where we have three distinct objects and we are creating, uh, so n is equal to three. So we are creating an uh, ordered sequence of length k is equal to two. As then can be calculated in the following way, uh, three factorial divided by three minus two factorial, which is one factorial. So this is equal to six. Uh, now following the simple, uh, similar proof, we can derive um, the following color, corollary in the case when we are permuting an entire uh, set of n distinct objects. So we have, uh, n operations, n places in our ordered sequence. Uh, and we are choosing from n distinct objects. So we have n multiplied by n minus one, by n minus two, by n minus three, and so on up to one. So n minus n plus one. So this product here is equal to n factorial. Let's take a look at the following problem. Uh, how many permutations of lengths three can be formed from a set of four distinct elements, A, B, C, and D? Uh, so this is equal to four factorial uh, divided by four minus three factorial. So this is one factorial. So this is equal to 24. If we list all possible outcomes for this problem here, uh, then oh, we can use the following table as a proof of uh, our theorem here for calculating the number of permutations. So we have uh, four outcomes for first place in our ordered sequence. Then we have three outcomes for uh, a second place in our ordered sequence and two outcomes uh, for the last place in our ordered sequence. So this is uh, four multiplied by three multiplied by two, which is equal to 24, okay? Now let's take a look at another problem. You guys are probably familiar with the following game. Let's say we have a picture of a tree. on a board uh, that is made, let's say, out of wood. Uh, then the, that uh, board is split into a four by four grid. And one of the tiles is left out empty. Uh, such that we can uh, rearrange the uh, tiles on our grid here to get a different picture. Let's say that we rearrange the original picture of a tree. Let's say our tree now looks like that some part of the tree here. Uh, 
So we have our uh, original picture of a tree here, uh, rearranged in the following way, and one of the tiles is empty. And the goal of this game is to uh, rearrange the tiles uh, to get the original uh, image back. So the question is following. Uh, let's assume that um, we can physically move any tile anywhere we want. Uh, what is the total number of combinations that we can get on our four by four grid? Or what is the total number of different images that we can get on our board here? So let's let's move on to a more simple model. Um, let's say that we have uh, numbers on our grid instead of a picture. And one of the tiles, the black one, is uh, left empty. So um, let's assume that uh, we can physically get uh, any combination you can imagine on your grid by, let's say, physically removing the tiles and putting them back. Uh, okay, so question is, what is the total number of combinations we can get on that grid? So here we can, again, uh, use uh, rule of permutations uh, to calculate the total number of possible uh, pictures we can get on our grid. So we have, um, uh, let's calculate the number of operations here. Uh, let's consider our uh, entries in our 4x4 four four matrix here as our operations. So uh, we have operation in the first cell here. First operation, second, let's say operation is in second cell here, third operation in uh, a third cell here, and so on. So we'll have 16 operations on the four by four matrix. Um, the total number of tiles we have here is 15. However, an empty tile might also be considered as an outcome of our operation here. So uh, choosing a place for our empty tile for let's say operation A here is also considered as a tile. So we have 16 tiles to choose from, 15 tiles with numbers on them and one empty tile. So we have 16 choices for first operation here. Then since we used one of the tiles in the first cell here, we have 15 uh, choices for a second cell here and so on. All right, which gives us 16 factorial. So there are 16 factorial uh, total possible ways of rearranging our uh, picture here. Let's take a look at another problem. So we have chessboard, eight by eight matrix. Uh, in how many ways we can uh, rearrange eight rooks on that chess board such that they cannot capture each other. Uh, so a rook can move horizontally and vertically and can capture any figure that is on its way. So let's calculate the total number of such uh, arrangements on the chess board. Uh, so let's go column by column. Uh, no two rooks can be placed uh, in a single column. So if we have uh, two rooks, they can capture each other. So this is not okay. And uh, we can only have one rook in each column. So let's uh, split our columns as an operation. So we have here operation A, B, C, and so on. So we have eight operations. Now let's calculate the total number of outcomes in each operation. And operation A will be an operation of choosing a place uh, for a rook that is in column, uh, in the first column. Uh, so for first column or operation A, we'll have eight cho choices. Uh, then since we placed our rook uh, on one of the cells of a first column here, we'll have one less choice for the next column. 
and one less choice for the next column and so on. So the total number of such arrangements on the chessboard is eight factorial. Okay, now on to the next rule. Uh, permutations when not all of the objects that we are permuting are distinct. Uh, we will still be working with ordered sequences. Uh, so in the case when we were permuting um, three objects, let's say we're creating three letter words out of three letters, A, B, C, uh, we got six total number of outcomes. Uh, let's see what is going to happen if let's say two uh, of the three objects here are not distinct. So let's say we will have two letters A and one letter C. Obviously the total number of outcomes is going to decrease. Uh, let's count them. So we'll have A, A, C, uh, A, C, A, C, A, A. And that's it. So uh, the total number of ordered sequences when uh, we have three objects, however, uh, two objects in the first group are the same uh, is equal to three. Okay, now um, let's generalize that. Uh, let's say we'll have n objects, n1 being of one kind and two being of a second kind. So let's say we'll have n letters. However, let's say we'll have n1 uh, letters A and two letters B and so on. And n r letters of uh, n r's kind. So the total number of uh, arrangements we'll have, total number of ordered sequences in that case is equal to n factorial divided by n1 factorial uh, multiplied by n2 factorial and so on divided by n r factorial. Where is the total num? Uh, the total sum here of n i s is equal to n. So n one objects of first group, n two objects in the second group, and r objects in the r s group. Uh, we have n total objects, so their sum is equal to n. Now let's prove that. Um, so let's say here we have uh, our letters of a first group, letter A's. So this is our first group, letters B's. In the second group, letter C's. In the third group and so on. Now, um, uh, let's, we are creating an ordered sequence uh, of lengths n. Uh, the sum of all objects in all these groups. So this is R's group. Let's say R's group will correspond to, uh, to letters, let's say X. The total number, the, the total sum of objects in all these R groups is equal to N. Um, let's assume that uh, total number of such ordered sequences is equal to N. The total number of ways to arrange N such objects uh, is equal to big N. Um, now let's start by, uh, by first adding the following simple modification. Uh, let's assume that um, all objects in the first group are distinct. So now we are going to make a distinction between these three A's here. So let's say uh, N1, uh, A1, A2, A3. Um, there are N1 objects in the first group. So N1 letters, A letters in the first group. Now, if we give uh, these letters uh, a sub index uh, and we make distin distinction between them. And now let's calculate the total number of arrangements, uh, total number of such ordered sequences when all objects in the first group are distinct. This number N is going to be multiplied by 
uh, n1 factorial. Uh, this happens by the following reason. Uh, let's take a look at a specific uh, entry. Uh, when not all objects in our first group were distinct, uh, let's say we had a sequence of the following type, couple of A's at the start, a single A in the middle, and so on. Uh, now, if we make a distinction between these A's here, uh, let's calculate how many different sequences we can get from uh, this sequence here when all A's were the same. So let's say we have A1 first, A2 second, A3 here, A2 here, A1 here, A3 here, A3 first, A1 second, A2 in the middle, uh, then A1, A3, A2 in the middle, Then let's say A1 in the middle, A2, A3, and finally A3, A2, and A1 here in the middle. Uh, so we multiply um, uh, our number big N here by N1 factorial by the number of ways we can now permute the total number of objects in the first group since uh, we can consider our old sequence here uh, when all A's uh, were the same as having uh, three operations uh, in which we choose uh, an index uh, for our uh, A here. So we have uh, three choices for first place uh, two choices for a second and one choice for a place of A that is that was in the middle, uh, which is equal to N1 factorial, the total number of objects in the first group. Now let's do the same um, uh, for the objects that are in the second group. Let's give those B indexes, sub indexes. Uh, so there are n2 total number of objects in the second group. So we are going to multiply our big n here by n2 factorial and so on. So we are going to do the same for a third group, for a fourth and for and so on up to our group. Uh, so our n here is going to be multiplied by n3 factorial and so on up to an R factorial. Okay, so now what we did here, uh, we came back to our problem uh, in our previous rule where we were working with permutations in the case when all objects were distinct. Now, if we take a look at our uh, current problem here, now all objects here are also distinct. So the total number uh, of ordered sequences that we can get here is equal to n factorial, which is equal to the total number of objects here in all these groups. All right, now uh, expressing our big N, big N is going to be equal to uh, n factorial divided by n1 factorial, n2 factorial, and so on, and r factorial. Okay, so um, the total number of ways we can arrange uh, n objects where not all of them are distinct, uh, specifically having n1 uh, objects of a first type and two objects of second type and nr objects of r type uh, is going to be calculated using that formula here. Let's take a look at the following problem. Uh, let's say you are trying to buy chocolate from a vending machine that costs 85 cents. Uh, let's say that you have uh, two quarters, uh, three dimes, and a nickel. Uh, in how many ways you can put your coins, uh, insert your coins in a vending machine? Uh, so we have two objects of a first group. Here we have quarters, two quarters. We have two objects, three objects in our um, second group, three dimes. 
and one object of last group, we have a single nickel. Uh, then we have to create ordered sequence uh, from our uh, three different types of objects here, where the total number of objects is equal to six. Uh, we have two objects uh, of a first group, so n1 is equal to two, uh, three objects of a second group, and one object of a last third group. total number of objects, big uh, n is equal to six. So the total number of such sequences is n equal to n, total number of objects uh, we are permuting uh, divided by n1 factorial, total number of objects in the first group, and two factorial, total number of objects in the second group, and n3 factorial, total number of objects in the third group. So this is equal to six factorial, divided by two factorial, uh, divided by three factorial, divided by one factorial, which is equal to 60. So there are 60 different ways you can insert your coins uh, in that pending machine. So the last theorem that we are going to study in this video is on combination, counting combination. Uh, so in the previous three rules that we have covered so far, uh, we were working with ordered sequences. However, order is not always important. Uh, let's assume that you are playing a game of cards and let's assume that you're playing a poker, then having a king and the queen uh, is no different than having a hand where you have a queen and a king, right? So order here is not important. Uh, let's take a look at the following problem. Um, let's assume that we have a bunch of students, um, let's say four students, uh, and uh, we are arranging them in groups of three. Uh, so we are arranging them in groups of size three. So an easy way to uh, look at combination problems is to imagine two bags. bags. So first bag uh, is a big one where we have all of our objects. So all of our four students are in the first bag here. Uh, let's say the number here is equal to M. And we are uh, putting the students, uh, let's say in a groups of three. Um, so we are going to uh, gather uh, students from uh, this bag here and put them in a smaller bag, I would say, a, uh, a bag of size k, uh, let's say k is equal to three, and the size of a big bag here is equal to four. Um, let's say that we are arranging them in groups and uh, then uh, having students A, B, C in a group is no different than having students uh, B, A, C, right? So order now is not important. Calculate the total number of combinations. Uh, we are going to use the following theorem. So the number of ways to form combinations of size k. So this is the size of a lesser bag uh, from a set of n distinct objects where n uh, is the size of a big bag. Repetitions are not allowed. Is denoted by the symbol n choose k or n choose k. And is calculated as n factorial divided by k factorial divided by n minus k factorial. Now let's prove that. Uh, let's assume that the total number of such combinations of size k from a set of n distinct objects is equal to big N. Let's come back to our problem here of creating groups of three out of four students. So we have group A, B, C. Another group is B, C, D. Another group is A, C, D. And the last group is A, B, D. Um, now let's modify our problem in the following way. So order here doesn't matter. Let's make that so order will matter. Let's assume that now in our groups we'll have a president, a vice president, and a simple member. Uh, so let's say 
um, A is a president, B is a vice president, and C is a member. So now we are creating ordered sequences out of these three objects here. Uh, then we have A, C, B, uh, B as a president, A as a vice president, C as a member, B as a president, C vice president, A member, uh, C, A, B, and C, B, A. So the total number of such ordered sequences here is equal to six uh, or equal to three factorial, which is the size of our ordered sequence. This is simply uh, a permutation of size K. So the total number of such permutations is equal to K factorial, right? Now let's do the same for the other groups. Uh, we'll have B as a president, C vice president, D as a member, uh, B as a president, D vice president, C as a member, and so on. We'll have also six such uh, different arrangements of our ordered sequence here, which is K factorial. And the same will go for this group here and the same for the last group here. Now let's take a look at our problem for Rome at different perspective. Now what we did here um, is we created ordered sequences of size three out of four distinct elements. So we know this is a simply permutation of size three out of four objects, which is calculated by n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. Uh, so um, the number of such combinations of size k from a set of n distinct objects is equal to big N. Uh, if we modify it to the problem where order is going to matter, uh, then we have to multiply. So you can see that we increase the number of outcomes by k factorial. So we have to multiply by k factorial here. Now, if we make it... Um, if we switch from a problem where order didn't matter to the one where order matters, this is a simply a problem of creating uh, permutations of size k from n distinct objects. So this is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial. So the number n that we are looking for is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial multiplied by k factorial. Okay, guys, so here I have a small mistake. That should be here. So the symbol for uh, that is n choose k or n choose k. Let's take a look at the following problem. We have eight politicians meeting for a fundraiser. How many greetings can be exchanged if each politician shakes hands with every other one exactly once? Uh, so if we look at our problem here um, from a perspective where we're working with uh, the bags, uh, we have a big bag of size uh, n is equal to eight. So there are eight politicians, A, B, and so on. Uh, and we are creating groups of two. Uh, K is equal to two. The, so, the size of a small bag is equal to two. Uh, so each bag is going to correspond to a handshake of two politicians. Uh, since uh, politician A shaking hand with a politician B is the same as politician B shaking hand with a politician A, right? So we are creating combinations of size two out of n distinct, n is equal to eight distinct objects, uh, which is calculated uh, as eight factorial divided by n minus k, six factorial divided by k factorial divided by two. So this is seven multiplied by eight over two, seven multiplied by four, 28. So there are 28 different handshakes happening at that fundraiser. Okay, guys, uh, we'll take a look at more complex problems on our next chapter. Uh, this is going to conclude our video on combinatorics.